So let's talk about the Gospel of the Beloved Companion. Hey guys, John here. Today's comment that I'm responding to uh, dives into a whole bunch of things that I talk about very frequently. Let's start with the concept of the Bible and the, all of the writings of the time being very flawed documents. Every version of the Bible that they've found from ancient times has edits all through them. The original text that you find, even the Gnostic text and all, all began as oral tradition for decades before they were written down by, by Greek writers, Greek scholars. And so when you look at a- any text of the time, you have to realize that no matter what text you're looking at, it has been altered, and it been altered many, many times, especially the modern Bible. It, it is like the end of a long telephone game. And so things are changing constantly. People are changing the meanings of words. People are changing where commas are, which makes a difference, you know, and they're, they're, they're modern versions, right? They're, they're, people are making changes in ways that uh, completely change the meanings of things. And it's been that way since the beginning. The, the Codex Sinaiticus, which is the oldest version of the modern Bible, has edits all through it, not, and not only just grammatically, but contextually. Now, this book that, that being, is being asked about in this question is called The Gospel of the Be- Beloved Companion. And The Gospel of the Beloved Companion is, is one of those books that, that has been found in, in the ancient text you know, prior to the Bible, and it's being interpreted by a gentleman overseas. And so, um, but like all the texts, they're, they're all coming from an oral tradition first into a writing. Now, this, this text I find really fascinating for several reasons. Uh, the text is almost verbatim the book of John. When you look at them side by side, it's the same structure, it's the same stories, the same things. It's got some changes in it that, that are unique and I actually think are fantastic because it sort of starts to clear things up in a very big way. You know, John is known as John the Beloved, right? The Beloved Companion is, ta- is talking about Mary Magdalene, which is, which is a great uh, idea because my memory from regression of their relationship was beautiful. So let me just read the comment here so that we can get in on the same page as to what this video is about. The unnamed beloved disciple, or the disciple who Jesus loved, was mentioned at least twice in the Gospel of John. The mystery person was present at the crucifixion. Previous to that, the beloved disciple was said to lay their head on Jesus' chest or lap. The story was partially redacted in later translation of the Gospel of John. The Gospel of the Beloved Companion, which you say is an earlier version of the Gospel of John, which I do, also writes these two instances. The Gospel of the Beloved Companion seems to indicate that one or both of the instances identify the beloved disciple as Mary Magdalene. I saw your video about your memory of Jeshua's crucifixion. Please comment on this if you would. Warm regards, Tony. Well, warm regards back to you, my friend, Tony. I love, I love this question because I have very distinct memories of Ishti, Mary, Mariam, his wife, literally laying her head on his chest. Literally, they, they would, they, they loved each other. They were always against each other. They were always pressed against each other. They were always touching one another. They, they absolutely were loving. My, my memory of the crucifixion, I'm looking up at a cross, but to my left is, is Ishti Mariam, and to my right is Mother Mary. And, and my, the only reason John was even there was because he was there for them to take care. Because he was told, you know, mother, there's your son, son, there's your mother. He was there to take care of his wife and mother. That's why John is the only one of the 12 who showed up there. The rest of them were not there. He was the only one. The M- Mother Mary and, 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 and Ishti Mariam were very much not going to go anywhere but where he was. And it was, it was that way. So when you look at the, the, the Gospel of the Beloved Companion and you look at the book of John, you're looking at books of, that have been edited and twisted and turned. And as I said, I think the, the Gospel of the Beloved Companion is just an earlier version of John. But I totally think John is, is completely skewed 
So to see an earlier version that says the person with their head on their lap was Mary Magdalene would make perfect sense to me, would make absolutely perfect sense to me because they had a love. But you also have to remember that by the time the book of John came about, um, the Catholic Church got their hands on it. Now, the Catholic Church leaned heavily into Paul and Paul's belief about Je Jesus being married, and I'm saying Jesus because that's the, the religious term. Jesus wasn't allowed to be married because he was a holy man. It would never have been married, would, uh, which makes no sense whatsoever. Considered the, the disciples themselves called him rabbi in the book, and rabbis had to be married. It was part of their process, part of their belief system, right? So the idea that, 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 that Mary Magdalene was not there is, is very much worthy of ridicule. When you think about the, 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 the idea of, of laying their head on someone's lap or something of that nature, um, when I traveled through Egypt, one of the things that really stood out was Egyptian men. They walk down, down the street arm in arm. They walk with their arms around each other. They, they just, they ha they're much more affectionate and close. They have less of a Western adherence to personal space. Uh, so back then, I, I'm sure it was probably the same way. It was very much a, you know, you, you just leaned into what you loved, right? So do I think John probably uh, hung out with Jeshua and put his arm around Jeshua? Absolutely, I think that would have happened. But I think when it comes down to laying your head on their chest and putting your head on their lap, that would not surprise me in any way, shape, or form if that was, if that was his wife. Because that, that was the relationship they had. They, they just fawned over each other. They loved each other. They laughed. They were always just kind of touching each other. So it would make perfect sense for, for it to be her. Now, that unnamed disciple you talked about, um, there's, there's so many occurrences in the Bible that have been altered and changed. And even the, even the, the terrible story that makes um, Mary Magdalene the prostitute, that's not what the text say. The text say it was a prostitute. It never says Mary Magdalene in that story, but the Catholic Church had to make it Mary Magdalene because she couldn't be his wife. And that had to be the, the story of this, right? So it was, it was really came down to this idea of, it, you know, was Mary Magdalene the beloved companion? Well, he was, she was definitely a beloved companion. She was definitely somebody who was, who was probably closer to him than anybody else. What, what I find happening now, though, is a lot of people are taking this, these stories like this, and they're, tr and they're looking at them from the, the goggles of a modern time and, and modern sensibilities, and specifically through the, the guise of women's rights and women's movement and women's equality, and which, I, which I'm all for. <laughs> you know, I think, in fact, I think we ought, to, we ought to just be humans and not male, female genders or you know, sexual orientation. I think we should just be all humans and just love one another. But during that time, you have to remember that time period was very much more like Afghanistan is today with a very highly militant patriarchal society, women being subjugated. And especially after Paul came in, right? If you want to see something really interesting, go look at the, the Gnostic Gospel of Mary and look how she comes to the disciples to tell them her vision of Jeshua. And at the end of the thing, two of the disciples start saying, well, why should we listen to you? You're a woman. Literally starts tell, telling her that, she, her that what she's saying has no value, that Jeshua would never go to her instead of them. And then, you know, be thankful for Levi, who basically put them both in their place. But it really comes down to is, in your, your question is, was the beloved disciple Mary Magdalene, or was it John? I think the, be the beloved disciple itself is a, an ambiguity because he loved everybody, but his most beloved was, of course, his wife. Of course it was Mary Magdalene, right? Did he love John? Yeah, he absolutely loved John. John, John loved him, and John, John gave up his regular life. He walked away from, from his village, left his father behind. He went on to, and never had a wife or a child. He never actually 
became a father and a, and a husband himself because he dedicated his life to the teachings of Jeshua. And everything was about serving him while he was alive and then serving his lessons and his teachings after he was gone. That measure of love for someone is profound. It's profound. And I think that, yes, the beloved disciple could easily have been Mary Magdalene, could have also been John. I don't think it really matters, really. I think it's just words from of some f very flawed documents. But uh, to, to give you a, a better understanding of my view on this, he adored his wife, and she adored him, and they were always on top of each other. <laughs> my favorite memory of Jeshua is on the side of a road, eating figs, and his wife literally laughing, and laughing and then falling against his chest and leaning into his chest and being right there on top of him, touching him, because of the, just the pure love they had for each other. And so that's my thought on your topic today. I hope that gives you the insights you were looking for. I know I'm not giving you a definitive one way or another, but I'm just telling you, absolutely she was there, absolutely she was... Uh, she would lay his head, her head on his chest, whether the books are saying it or not, who knows? Who, who knows, you know? And when you look at the, the, the gospel of the beloved companion and the gospel of John, they're almost identical. Um, but the, the nuances and the changes are because the documents are flawed. So that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.